Law and Home Affairs Minister K. Shanmugam, on Wednesday, November 8, highlighted the importance of religious leaders weighing in on matters concerning people in their communities. Speaking at an event organized by the interreligious organization IRO, Mr. Shanmugam said there had been recent comments that religious leaders should not be involved in giving guidance or advice on the situation in Israel and Gaza. The minister did not specify the source of these comments. The IRO, a non-governmental organization founded by leaders of different faiths with the stated aim of working towards religious harmony, organized the event, the Singapore premiere of locally produced documentary, Technologies of the Soul. Mr. Shanmugam, the guest of honor at the screening, spoke about the difference between the conduct of religious leaders in other countries and those in Singapore. We have also seen how rhetoric by religious leaders can inflame. Rather than reduce tensions, he said, noting reports of more than 1,000 anti-Semitic acts in France and a tenfold increase in anti-Muslim sentiment in Austria. We can be thankful that in Singapore the situation has been quite different so far. It is not by accident, a lot of it is by design over the years. And one of the key reasons for this is that our religious leaders have given guidance. Events in Palestine is a political conflict. And the fact is, there are actors on all sides who are misusing religion for their particular political gain, said Mr. Shanmugam. Given that religion is being invoked by many around the world. In this region, religious leaders and the IRO have a role and important duty to guide our communities. For Singapore, the focus has to be to ensure and maintain harmony and peace in the community. He added. Mr. Shanmugam spoke of how the Mufti of Singapore, Dr. Nazaruddin Mohammed Nasir, had given guidance on how to pray for those suffering, on contributing to humanitarian efforts, and the importance of verifying information. He pointed to the exchange of letters between Chief Rabbi Mordecai Abergel and Dr. Nazaruddin that affirmed the law standing trust, confidence, and friendship between Jews and Muslims in Singapore, and made a common plea for the lives of those caught in the conflict. These are very constructive positions and it's difficult to say in how many countries this would have been possible. Communities are finding themselves divided along racial and religious lines. In Singapore, we express solidarity and unity in our shared humanity, said Mr. Shanmugam. Religion does not need to divide us. It should help to bring us together. On his point about comments that question the involvement of religious leaders in the conversation on the Israel-Hamas war, Mr. Shanmugam said he was at a loss to understand why this was so. This is not how we have the peace and harmony that we have today in Singapore, he said. Citing the Den Mufti's comments following the 9-11 terrorist attacks, Mr. Shanmugam said that Singapore's Muslim religious leader had condemned the attacks and emphasized that suicide bombings were against Islamic teaching. Mr. Shanmugam also pointed out that after the escalation of violence in Ghazi in 2014 and when the Islamic State group had taken over parts of Iraq, the Archbishop of the Catholic Church in Singapore had issued guidance on how to pray for the victims, the region as a whole, and on humanitarian financial aid. In the past five years, religious guidance or statements have been issued on more than 10 issues by the National Council of Churches and the Islamic Religious Council of Singapore MUIS in relation to national and international developments, said Mr. Shanmugam. It is quite usual, indeed important, for religious leaders to weigh in on matters that concern people in their communities, he added. We draw a line between religion and politics, but it is important that religious leaders give guidance to their communities on prayer, on assisting, on how they can help others in distress. Militant group Hamas launched raids into Israel on October 7, 
killing about 1,400 people and capturing more than 200 hostages. Since then, Israel has relentlessly bombarded Gaza and sent in ground troops. As the war enters its second month, health authorities in Gaza say more than 10,000 Palestinians, including women and children, have died. And more than 1.5 million people have been forced to leave their homes. On Sunday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu rejected growing calls for a ceasefire in Gaza and demanded the return of all the hostages that Hamas took in the October 7 attack. Singapore has condemned Hamas raids, with Prime Minister Li Xin Long saying last month that the attack was horrendous and could not be justified. While Israel has the legitimate right to defend its citizens. It must comply with international law, including laws of war, and do its utmost to protect the safety and security of civilians, Singapore's Ministry of Foreign Affairs MFA said last month. Last month, Singapore voted in favour of a resolution during an emergency session of the United Nations General Assembly to protect civilians and uphold legal and humanitarian obligations amid conflict in the Gaza Strip. The resolution outlined several terms, including recalling existing resolutions to protect civilians in armed conflict. It also expressed grave concern about the latest escalation of violence since the attack by Hamas on Israel and the grave deterioration of the situation in the region. On Monday, Foreign Affairs Minister Vivian Balakrishnan spoke in Parliament on the Israel-Hamas conflict after more than 30 parliamentary questions and a motion on the wall were filed. The motion, filed by three PAP members of Parliament, sought to express condolences to the innocent victims and civilian casualties in the war, as well as advocate the urgent delivery of humanitarian aid. It also condemned those responsible for the terrorist acts and violations of international law, and called for all parties to ensure the safety and security of civilians, including the release of all hostages. The motion also reiterated Singapore's long-standing commitment to a negotiated two-state solution consistent with the relevant UN Security Council resolutions and urged all Singaporeans to safeguard and uphold its multiracial and multireligious peace and harmony. On Wednesday at the event, Mr. Shanmugam said, I'm particularly glad that all the three parties in Parliament agreed on a common position because some of them had meandered before the parliamentary session. In Singapore, all parties work together to foster acceptance, peace, common humanity across religions, said Mr. Shanmugam. And we all have an important role to play in speaking wisdom, counseling tolerance, and building peace especially when we see not-so-good things happening in many parts of the world, he said. What we have in Singapore today is precious and we all have a role to try and keep it that way.